Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a nice, happy morning over here from very cold, very icy, very slippery Helsinki, Finland. I've done my fair share of falling today, but of course, as always, wishing you well. And it's getting a live stream right over here as Bitcoin has done absolutely nothing. But with it doing nothing, it's actually kind of uh, provided a little bit of a uh, little bit of resolution on what we're likely to do in this uh, in this consolidation that we've been working on for the last. Well, really, I consider this whole thing now consolidation going all the way from here of 20th of December. Anyways. In these lower time frames, or perhaps just uh, as we start over here on the daily, I do want to bring up the 10 simple. That was what we were watching yesterday and just going over the higher, higher time frames and understanding that a lot of the time when it comes down to these more um, annoying periods, I think a lot of people refer to them as uh, essentially periods of consolidation. Um, it, 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 it really provides perspective to look at the higher time frames and understand, okay, we're just kind of, you know, tying this area up and then, and then getting ready for the next move. And I think that is really, really soothing to a lot of people uh, to understand that essentially most of the time there's not a big move to be made. I mean, looking at the break of 6,000 right over here, well, you get, you get about one or two of those a year, you know? Uh, anyways. This area right over here, 10 simple crossing below the 21 exponential moving average. We are starting to get a little bit of more divergence between these two uh, moving averages right over here. Not necessarily getting the volume signature that I want to see uh, to fully confirm this. However, looking at this guy right over here, if we do start to take out the 35, 50-ish uh, low, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to likely signal some continuation, at least to the low of this guy right over here, low 3,500. And I would imagine at that point in time, gravity does indeed take over and we start to play out the full-on measure move of the this symmetrical triangle that we've been looking at for what was it about two and a half to three weeks anyways this guy over here still very much in play again as long as we are below 3850 this is my main uh main look on bitcoin this is what i do believe will likely very likely happen and essentially this does have a mesh move pointing all the way down to this uh 3250 ish area 30 3300 ish area which is remember the uh, the red 200 simple moving average on our weekly dollar time frame right over here which i don't have on currently but if we do this guy right there then boom and yes, you can see it right over there. So I do like this area for confluence. Um, while I am overall bearish on Bitcoin, believing that it's very, 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 very likely to make new lows below this 3250 low right over here. I think it's going to take some time. I don't want to really be bearish off that until the 200 simple moving average breaks over here. It could take a long time, you know, another month, two months, three months, whatever it ends up being. Uh, I won't make too many comments on how much time it's likely to take. But when we are looking at this formation right over here, going back to this fresh GDAX chart and we extend this guy over here and we do something very bad we do something very naughty and we say you know what and maybe come back down around here tag the 200 simple bounce off it and then what do we end up creating well perhaps a descending triangle once again well that would have an apex on it uh, somewhere all the way over here yeah if we just extend this a little bit further down this would actually have an apex around uh, early april now of course when it comes to triangles you don't have to fill it all the way up to get resolution on it to get uh to you know to, to get it directly to the apex and then make a move in fact most of the time it breaks when it's about you know 75 percent full um as you saw right over here on this one and as you saw on the big one of uh 2018 actually right over here it was mainly you know pretty much almost all, all you know all there but uh you know still had still had some juice in it anyways uh just becomes more and more likely to break the more and more mature it, it, it comes into that uh into that formation anyways this this smaller symmetrical triangle right over here again that measure move is in play as long as we're below 3850 so i am essentially bearish and looking to looking for a nice short as long as we're below 3850 so if even if Bitcoin were to break up right now, which I think is actually less likely again with the events of the last 24 hours, this is this consolidation right over here looks like a consolidation that wants to break to the downside. Um, even if it did break to the upside and uh, and tag 37.50 right over here, the 200 simple moving average, and then perhaps even 38.50, I'd be looking at I'd be looking for plays right on those levels. Again, when it comes to technical analysis, there's no 100% way to do this. There is only risk reward opportunities, which uh, which we can see a couple of really good ones right over here. Anyways, going into the very low time frames, perhaps like an hourly right over here, we can actually make another formation right here, a smaller symmetrical triangle within you know w uh, within our descending 
Bitcoin triangle coming off of these the bigger symmetrical triangle right over here. You know, Bitcoin loves triangles. I love triangles too. And triangles, they just seem to get it right a lot of the times, especially in crypto land. Other patterns, not a big fan of. Um, in traditional markets, uh, I would change my opinion on that. But but in crypto land, uh, most pattern traders, I don't really see to uh, do that do too well because you're going to be calling shit like a compound fulcrum and you don't, you know, and then you start buying at 60, 6,400 or whatever it might be. Anyways, uh, this guy right over here, I'll be working on a very small symmetrical triangle. I mean, it does look about right. Um, it does look about right to me. We are being governed by all the major moving averages right over here. Uh, volume falling off. In fact, if we did make a little bit of a relation between this guy, maybe put it on like a two hour perhaps. Yeah, we could do this on like a two hour. In fact, you could eat, you might well, no, we haven't broken or anything like that. But if you do put on a two hour, you can actually consolidate this just a little bit more. And uh, that would look about right. It's, it's not perfect. Uh, I'm sure people are drawing it like this and saying that it's already broken. I I could actually agree with that. Although, again, when you have a break of, of a formation like this, you want to see volume confirmation. We don't have that right here uh, to be very, very clear. So when it comes down to it, uh, I, I'm not really seeing anything indicative of a bit like uh, of it like being confirmed as of just yet, which always makes me, you know, want to kind of step back and not really have a position. I don't really have a position right now. I get, I'm kind of short um, from from like 3620 or, or wherever I uncovered my my short from 6300. Uh, I think it's somewhere right around there on my streamer account. Uh, I believe I showed that last night. Um, if things were to pop back up and take all this upper resistance right over here, 3600, again, I'd be looking for short. Uh, the next area of interest would be 3680 above there. Then we could perhaps get the 3750 area and 3850 over there, you know, depending upon which one gets taken out. So, so there's an opportunity, you know, whichever way that this thing breaks. But I do believe that is actually more likely to break down from here. Uh, if we do get another run up to the six uh, to the 3600 right over, uh, area right over here, that would likely, you know, if it does get rejected, that's probably going to be probably going to be it. I'd imagine. Uh, again, looking at our higher time frames, a two-day dildo chart, which we actually did just get. A new tick on uh this looks like the nice m of m of murder m is for murder a nice pattern distribution and breaking down as long as we are essentially closing these two-day dildos below this 3690 area right over here which you can actually see one two three or you could con you could consider this a third wick right over here uh that would be a rejection in my book um and you know what we could actually if we go down to like a lower time frame it actually kind of does look like a very fucked up inverted uh, cup and handle anyways let's say over here on the two-day for just a second um first things first what I put the most points on uh, exponential moving averages you can see that we got the two-day dildo death cross right over here ever since then we've been living under the 21 exponential moving average meaning that we've been both opening and closing two-day dildos below there so as long as we're below there I am completely cool with you know really taking shorts off that um that's why that's why uh when i was on street I, I think it was like last week or something like that or two weeks ago when we broke this area that's essentially what i was going off of when i took that trade i think a lot of other people took that trade as well so good on you um uh you know if you're still holding it well <laughs> nice i didn't i didn't hold it too much in fact i actually got out of out of it way too soon um but also on our two-day oscillators they are suggesting more down activity as well this is your two-day stokes over here still cross down still gaining momentum down and we did just get a new fresh tick on it last night or sorry, uh, yeah, in, in the last like, I don't know, four or six hours, whatever it might be. Again, the last time that you really had like a full on cross down was right over here. Um, and this was your break of 6,000 actually right here. So again, uh, you know, looking at that, it seems to actually have some good play on in Bitcoin land. Also, more importantly, it's telling you a few other things about price action right over here. When it's getting rejected from getting into the more bullishly controlled zone below this, or sorry, above this sixth area, that's typically a sign as well. You know, it's like saying, okay, we're rejecting the bulls, you know, taking taking back over right as it gets to that, you know, critical potential breakout area of 4,000. Everyone looking at your inverted, you know, Quasimodo over here. Well, no, <laughs> you know, again, uh, that's that. Uh, that's why I put a lot of weight on that. Also, uh, also important, the DMI, the DMX signaling that huh, you actually do have a short signal on this guy as well, a fresh one, DMX saying stop, drop, sell them on top. And last time you actually got a sell signal on this guy right over here was actually the break of 6,000 as well. So the two-day little chart does seem to get things pretty damn well when it comes to the higher time frames. And this is what I really like to look at during these sorts of periods of consolidation to gain a perspective of the of the higher, the, sorry, to gain the higher perspective of what this of what this as of what this asset is really doing. Um, um, 
so so looking at this there's also a few other things about the two-day total chart you got the rsi right over here again we did put in the hidden bearish divergence making a higher high on the rsi oscillator uh not even really been been able to get out of the bearish control zone and then back down and i believe that we are still trending below the exponential on this guy yeah we are so that is confirmed as of last night 7 p.m eastern time um so yeah when you do get that that uh that sort of marker a lot of the times it will come it will pop back down to the lower portion of the bearish control zone and again just look just looking at this guy right over here it does look droopy does look weak um but with bitcoin land you just never know when you're going to get that 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 nasty stop hunt i mean bitcoin can do like a 100 hundred dollar stop hunt um and just return back to the mean you know like that you know faster than nicholas martins can snap his fucking hands anyways uh again two day dildo chart if you're just going off of dildos right over here as long as you're both opening and closing dildos below basically this guy 3690 uh bearish chart um no doubt about that uh 10 simple moving average nowhere near price action i would have really loved if bitcoin actually tested this um it would have made things a lot easier that's also why i really wanted to see 3750 to get a real position in but you know bitcoin never a uh, trading is you know never makes it easy and this is why it's all a game of risk reward uh, opinion not it not you know needed to make money you know i'll, I'll be take I, I take trades based off of things um <laughs> i take trades based off of things good one crown wow you are a fucking moron um <laughs> <laughs> my point is, is uh, you know, my, you know, when I'm looking at technical analysis, there were a few uh, short signals within this range right over here. Again, the lower time frames uh, playing off of this triangular consolidation right here. So uh, I'm kind of going to, I'm, I'm going to be going with this one. As long as we're below 36.13, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be holding a short right over here. A um, little bit in profit right now, but not really doing too much. I have a few option plays on hand as well. Um, but uh but yeah i, I want to see the four hour 10 simple mood damage provide the resistance right here as you see that we did get a nice cross and that was on the cross and rejection of this massive dildo right here i believe we saw this one together or perhaps perhaps we didn't perhaps we did uh perhaps this was like right before my stream yesterday but this to me is pretty indicative of what the bigger bots and algorithms are doing right because you were in danger of of really closing this dildo much higher and that would have averted this cross instead it gets shoved back down at the last second and a nice uh, a nice massive bear wick to the upside right over here on a doji-ish type dildo typically a sign of indecision and perhaps even reversal uh, i mean you're we're talking about like a very very low time frame type uh, bullshit and hey what's up uh, who is that uh, jalu jalu wang good to meet you man good to have you in here and uh and after that you know kind of just slumping on forwards and downwards again volume characteristics on this guy not giving us too much you do have the very orderly drop off in volume that i look for to be demonstrative of consolidation actually going all the way back from over there um, which is also extremely indicative of corrective price action that is one of the big reasons why i believe that this is unlikely to be the low again if you want the full-on explanation of why uh bitcoin is very unlikely seeing the low definitely go check out the playlist titled long-term analysis it is an hours long worth look at at why you know bitcoin has, has been extremely unlikely to be bottom where bitcoin could bottom and what the forwards outlook could be um or or, or is likely to be i should say it's not it's not good to use could because then you could just be one of the people say well this thing could go up it could go down and it could also go sideways like great but can it go to the left because <laughs> i haven't seen that one just yet so if you say something actually interesting like that let me know until then go fuck yourself <laughs> just kidding my point is is um you know that uh that, um it, it takes a long time to really get those ideas out so definitely go check out that playlist i upload videos to that one every sunday um in the morning so so this guy right over here again you know it it doesn't look good to me but we're not getting the full-on signal just yet if i am looking at my oscillators over here four hour uh, stokes are still are still crossed down but they are losing momentum um you know uh, so i would imagine that they do stay crossed down as long as we're below 36 12 but if 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 price action does get back above there there will be a little bit of momentum probably carrying this thing back up at least to the prior hat 36 85 and uh if things get you know and then we can start talking about okay well now 30 37 50 is in striking distance i'd really 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 like to take a trade there it's just a much better risk reward opportunity as far as what you know what the potential could be uh four hour dmi adx uh dmx whatever the fuck uh 
uh, not really telling you anything about price action right here. In fact, the lower time frames are not really giving you it, not really giving you much. Uh, four hour RSI just consolidated between the neutral zone and the bearish zone, which is typically you know not the best sign. Um, four hour jewel telling you that we are literally consolidating um, by the definition of it, uh, which is exactly what it should be telling you, telling us. Um, let's go to the eight hour right over here. Eight hour is yeah, eight hours where things get interesting to me. And this is again why I believe that is that this is likely to be resolved to the downside. You got eight hour stokes, fresh cross down, getting rejected from getting out of the neutral zone. So just hanging between the neutral and the bearish control zone. Uh, again, with the fresh cross in there. Again, RSI just not even able to get out of the bearish control zone right over here. Um, and is DMX uh, telling you anything over here? DMX says no, <laughs> he says no, actually, uh, not really telling you anything right there. But again, below all major moving averages right over here, uh, using the 10 simple moving average as resistance, not good. Again, as, as long as we're below that, you know, I play this to the downside, even though I it would just make things so much fucking easier if this thing popped back up. 10 hour right over here, 10 hour, same sort of thing, fresh cross, getting rejected from getting out of the neutral zone. Um, and not not having any signature on this guy, not having any signature. Whoops, on that on that guy either. And RSI again, just just bearish consolidation within the bearish control zone. Um, more importantly, and what I do put some weight on is you have this very nasty exponential moving average cross, which is also represented on your other time frames. You know, your eight hour, your your twelve hour. Uh, but I'm just going to pay attention to the ten hour right here because we're on it. So again, you have you have the twenty one to the downside of the green fifty five. They are gaining momentum away from each other. Again, think of that as as like a as like a histogram, right? They are they are quite literally gaining momentum away from each other they are diverging telling you that the trend is getting a little bit stronger to the downside coming off of the break off of this symmetrical triangle right over here um and uh, and, and as long as we're below the 10 simple moving average i mean that that is your traditional way of saying okay well <laughs> all signs bearish uh so yeah uh 12 hour right over here gonna be more the same essentially although hasn't necessarily given up the 10 simple just yet um we still have about three hours and 13 minutes left to go on this guy uh but again that's the next one that, that, that i have my eyes on as bitcoin like slowly but surely just evens all of them out you know and then typically you get the nice move um again same sort of cross right over here on the break of this symmetrical triangle and uh again just same you know same uh, same sort of outlook did we look at the we looked at the daily yes because we talked about this cross right over here fresh cross so they're all starting to really get there i think daily uh daily stokes did just cross up actually um so fair enough uh, uh first time crossing up in quite some time uh no signal on on this uh trend uh, on that trending indicator right over there uh not really too much to report from the rsi either i mean just trending below the exponential so you know more more bearish signs and bullish um three day right over here you know being cradled by the uh by the 10 simple moving average and now it's back below so you know not really getting too much from this uh, uh stokes on here are losing momentum do we see another rejection of getting out of the neutral zone i mean that would be the next big signal all other time frames are essentially agreeing with that so you know three day like likely to likely to fall through with that dmi adx actually giving you a short signal as well again the last time you actually got one was over here in uh november and the only time that you even really got even a real signal before that was right over here on this uh on this down from uh 70 7800 to about 60 or so i guess just six thousand even um so again, doesn't give you doesn't give you signals often, but 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 when it does, they're typically pretty damn good. Uh, anyways, you know, just going up, just following up on the higher time frames and going to the weekly right over here. You know, we did put in a we did Bitcoin put in a bearish engulfing dildo right over here on last week's dildo close uh, Sunday 7 p.m. Eastern time. As long you know that is a very 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 high probability to get followed up with more red dildo parties just raining them down. The you know the thing is though is it doesn't mean that it has to happen on this week right over here. In fact, this just feels like a little bit of a pullback this does i mean this dildo right here in its own right was very like relatively low volume this was not like crazy or anything like that um but again you know as long as you're below all major moving averages bearish uh not really too much i'll say about it other than that uh mo momentum oscillators on this guy you actually do have your stokes snaking around but could be crossed up um first time in a while uh but your your weekly dmi adx dmx giving you the short signal as well um kind of you know kind of it's uh, again this is it's not a perfect one by any stretch of the imagination uh jewel jewel says hold up though do we find resistance here or not that's going to be a big the the next tick on the jewel is probably going to reveal it actually and this indicator again just it's 
it's not really supposed to get these sort of like trending type moves but when you do see things trending it will just it, it'll kind of like kiss and play off this uh the, this slower the slower pinkish uh, one over here um i've noticed and it's just like this indicator like you can use it for everything it's fucking crazy um anyways back on to the bitcoins right over here on the lower time frames and let's see if we have any more any more uh indications on the lower time frames hourly right over here not much looks like it uh hourly looks like it wants to pop up hourly stokes crossing up right here so again you know may uh do uh, do we get another test of this area right over here you know that's it's not necessarily like parties over for the uh, uh, uh for the immediate bearish case if that happens this area needs to be taken out 36 12 if that happens then yes then then we can very likely get that test of 36 uh 80 ish area which i would uh, I would actually really, uh, again, I would, I'd really, really like, but you know, as a trader, you gotta be able to, well, it's just, just another game of risk reward. That's, that's really all it comes down to. Uh, let's go check out GBDC. Let's go see if there's any clues in GBDC right over here. GBDC, uh, again, still filling out this bear flag, uh, below all major moving averages on the four hour dildo time frame. In fact, putting a nice rejection dildo right over there on it, but still holding on to the lower support of this. It's hot. You know, it's yes, this is a bear formation. Typically, typically, re, uh, going to be resolved to the downside again, just like Bitcoin extremely corrective uh, signature in the volume right over here um, but 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 until you actually fully break this just like with any pattern you don't want to play it before it actually is fully confirmed um, otherwise well you're gonna be playing the inverted head and shoulders and you're gonna be still waiting for waiting for 5,000 and then flash the Mimi with the uh, skeleton with his hands on the keyboard and uh, hey what's up uh, Liam good to meet you man good to have you in here um, anyways uh, yeah if this area does break four dollars and 25 cents um, which I guess it'll have a chance today. I mean, when you're resting right on it, does, it certainly does not look healthy. Uh, I want to see I want to see volume accompanying a break like that. And te technically, yes, there is a measure move to be made on this. Does it match up with anything else that we see? Yes, indeed, it does. In fact, all the way down around here, around this horizontal from this past prior uh, support um, and, and also breakout in uh, what was this like middle of 2017. So again, um, if things do break down that this would actually be kind of suggesting that things do take that next leg although on bitcoin land uh, i i still can't be i can't stress this enough that i don't think it's appropriate to be like looking for the next big break until the 200 simple gets broken you're going to see everyone get extremely bearish if and when bitcoin does get back down to the lower you know uh, to our lower supports that we just spoke about uh right over here um at the 3250 area again with all the things kind of uh meeting down around here um but it's 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 gonna be like it's likely to be the same shit as six thousand right where everyone's getting really bearish as soon as bitcoin gets below you know 6600 and then really bullish like anytime it moves upwards <laughs> so you know that that's just bitcoin land that's why that's why descending triangles are great because they, they 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 really fuck with people's emotions perfectly at the right times so everyone's doing the wrong thing at the wrong uh, at the wrong time anyways uh yeah, still, still negated that that potential golden cross on the four hour right over here. You know, big deal to kind of uh, understand what the bots and algorithms are doing. Again, they they basically tricked the lesser sophisticated guys and also the less sophisticated traders who are probably less educated. Um, think trying to play a golden cross like this before it actually happens. Again, anytime that you do have a, a counter cross after a long trending cross like this, it's it's usually gonna fail. Uh, the first one, the second one, the second one's typically good, but the first one usually does fail. That one didn't even get a chance to give you the golden cross to begin with but again you're like you're looking at the same thing right over here gets negated right over here that gets negated this was literally the last time that bitcoin was at 6400 before going all the way down uh and the last time we actually even had a golden cross like the literally the last time was right over here uh 6700 and before that was uh july of the of the past year so again um i'm not saying that that 3250 can't break on the next pass but i'd Probably, I'm definitely going to be closing shorts there, uh, and I'll and I'll just reopen if it gets confirmed below on on a daily or higher. Uh, let's put a fib on this guy, and if you like it, you should have thrown a fib on it. There we go. Whoops. Hey, come on, baby, show me the way. Yeah, there we go. So we have the 0.5 coming in right around here. So if Bitcoin does take a stab back up, I would, you know, that would be a potential trade. And actually, the 382 is coming in around 3800, which also would be the four hour 200 exponential uh, moving average as well. So uh, you know, a lot of things to be aware of on this guy. Um, we already did. I, I do consider this a front run of the 618 um, on the first pass on this bullish retracement. And you know, if the bots buy that, then they're going to be then they're going to be selling the 236, which they did right over here. Comes back down to like shoots past the 618 just a little bit. I consider that another pickup of the 618. If they are going to buy the 618 again, then the target usually is a 382 
to be fair but because this this dropped down a little bit below the 618 could it be that you know it's going to pick it's it's going to try to sell the 0.5 which we already got to um maybe i'm i'm just trying to i'm just trying to make it work in my own mind's eye right now on what's likely going on but uh again when this when this pattern actually does break we're looking for whoops we're looking for a volume signature that kind of boosts back up and you know and, and takes out this it does it's not like a trend line but you know i want to see something like you know getting back up into this area right over here to denote that okay we're no longer consolidating and we're actually moving now not mooning but moving <laughs> bad bad almost slip of tongue right there um but yeah you'll also notice that the uh, that the eight eight six is coming in right around here right around you know 3250 um so again this whole air you know that whole downwards area is going to be like all right really want to consider like maybe i mean I, I probably wouldn't go long but i'll definitely be closing shorts no doubt about that maybe maybe buy some calls or some or, or something i don't want to like actually have long deltas i just want to buy some lottery tickets uh you know expiring like a couple weeks out something like that would be okay um uh actually buying spot it's just just don't like doing something like that in a in an overall downwards market. I mean, the trend has been down for the last literally over a year. So the trend is your friend until the end of the trend, which I think a lot of people are starting to uh, realize, um, which is great, man, which is great. Uh, so again, for uh, for myself, um, this does not look like a bottom to me. Again, the volume is wrong. The uh, the reaction is wrong. The time spent at the lows is very unlikely. And the only way that I'd really consider this a potential low is if we, want, first things first, had a higher high on the daily. That would be a good start. Haven't done that, in, again, over a year, so, but it's not going to get you finished. The second thing I'd be looking for is a weekly dildo, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average right over here, 4150. If, if Bitcoin actually did that, both opens and closes above that area, I would actually really start to change a lot of, a, a lot of my perceptions and a lot of what I'm thinking right now. Um, but, uh, but Hey, as you can see, that's well and far away from happening. And then the third and final and, and most important thing, although you're probably going to know beforehand and, and especially the, with the weekly is going to happen beforehand, very, very likely. So I'd, you know, I'd probably take a little bit of a long off that, uh, would be Bitcoin getting back above 6,000, the area of consolidation for over a year. If it gets back above that phase, well, have no business being short. Do I think that that happens anytime soon? Fuck no. Fuck no, but I do want to. I always do want to repeat. What am I looking for to change my views? Um, until that happens, uh, this this has no real markings of a low uh, volume. Again, the 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 volume is deceivingly high right here. Remember, it's it's measured in coins traded, not dollars traded on exchange like Bitstamp. So. When Bitcoin is, you know, under four thousand dollars versus over here when it was above ten thousand dollars, the volume pictures are going to be drastically different. Um, again, th this area right over here in the mark cycle of 2014, 2015 is extremely reminiscent of what we're doing right over here. Uh, when it comes down to it, mark cycles the reason why they're even relevant. Why they, why, why I talk about them is because it, this is applies to all asset classes. It's it's a game of psychology, really, is what it comes down to. We're not looking at a chart of Bitcoin. We're looking at a chart of human psychology with regards to Bitcoin, and then a shit ton of bots being programmed to do relatively similar things over a long period of time. Why is it like that? Well, I can give you like the Oxford Dictionary definition. I could tell you what you know what a market maker is going to say about that, or I can just tell you that just is typically the way that it works out to be, which is really going to get most of the discussion done because in practice, that's that's typically how it goes in my experience. Again, it's not just Bitcoin land. It's also, you know, I've also seen it in Forex from what I've looked at. I've also seen it in commodities, which I've traded, and I've also seen it in equity options, which I used to be a professional market maker in. So these things are not, you know, it's it's not just particular to Bitcoin. It, it applies to it applies to just trading in general because we're, we're always going to be dealing with humans. So, so market cycles have these very brotherly characteristics. They're not like identical twins. But when you have a mark cycle of Bitcoin, now you have kind of a map forwards on how Bitcoin plays out its major highs and its major lows which we do see a lot of a uh, lot of uh, a lot of similarities between this one and this one over here and also you know the past ones as well um it's not just this past one although i don't you know i don't want to get into a huge discussion about that definitely go check out the long-term analysis playlist if you want the more in-depth look on that but uh but again look at the volume over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here looks very similar to what you did over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here the percent drawdown for off of this uh this descending triangle um, you know, into this first kind of major move down was about what 52 and a half percent. Well, uh, this ascending triangle right over here into our current low over here 
again, about 52% drawdown. Um, the percent bounce off of that drawdown going from dildo body to dildo body, which in my way, in my experience, is the more accurate way to do it. It's about 25% on this guy, done over the course of about two and a half months. Um, on this one, you know, we bounced up as much as as much as about 25% currently sitting at around like 10% off the lows. Um, so again, very, very similar. When Bitcoin actually does put in lows, when it does when it does put in a, a, a capitulation move, uh, we have we have a couple examples. We have this one right over here. You know, it rallies like 69% within us within the span of really a few days you, you actually had an example right over here of what capitulation does look like in february uh, on that drive down to six thousand again 60 percent move you know really done in the span of a couple days um it doesn't you know it doesn't take four weeks to do like literally a third of that um or, or half half of a th or a third of that as you do in these in these areas right over here again bitcoin that's the way that it does it if you're looking at a different you know asset like traditional markets the you know the general principles are going to be very very similar the percentages and the way that they play out those will be different those will be different so i don't want to make it sound like you know you need to see a 50 percent rally in the spot you know in spy to know that to, to know that the lows are in no not at all not at all to be very very clear um anyways if we do bring up the MVT signal, which I uh, I realized what I was doing wrong yesterday, I was looking at the wrong time frame. Uh, MVT signal right over here, and then I want to address something that someone said uh, in in an earlier comment. Um, but basically, uh, MVT signal, this thing also suggesting that we are nowhere near lows. This is actually endorsed by the maker himself, Willy Woo, and this is after the uh, th this is after the upgrades to the Bitcoin uh, chain have been made, you know, like Lightning and Liquid. So this is this actually is inclusive of these things. You can see that right now the oscillator is around this like this like 90 to 80 zone right over here. Well, if we go back to that same portion in 2014 that we were just looking at right over here, it's it's, it's remember. It's this guy right over here. Where's our oscillator at? Right over there. So again, just, just bringing it up right here. I'm going to put a nice horizontal actually right in this area. Where are we at? 93, right in the middle of it. Where are we at right now? That's very interesting. Again, straddling this area right over here. This thing is called major tops and major bottoms in Bitcoin's mark cycle history perfectly. The comment that I got was, why are you discounting the February low right over here as, as as not being a bottom? That was a capitulation move. Again, I've been saying this for a long time. This move over here, this drop down to 6,000 over here, this is what capitulation does and feels like. If you live through this move over here, when you see an asset lose literally 50% uh, in the span of less than a week, that is that is a great, great, <laughs> that is a great candidate for capitulation right over there. And then bounce up literally, you know, what, 100% from, from, from 6,000 to 12,000 in the span of like another couple weeks. That is capitulate that that is what capitulation could look like. Why was this? You know, I think I think the the misunderstanding was this person was insinuating. Why is that not like the ultimate low of Bitcoin forever? That's not how this thing works. It calls major tops and major bottoms in like a phase. And yes, it did kind of it did get the bottom of this phase. I know that you do go a little bit low over here. That's fine. This this phase obviously was not the ultimate low of the market cycle. Two different things, not to be confused with each other. But if you you know if you bought over here when this thing actually did bottom out at the uh, at the uh, at the 39 38 mark right over here, uh, you would have had a very nice play. Comes back up over here, calls the tops once again. One two three, boom! All you had to do was sell that area when it once it got it there, and you would have probably been pretty damn happy. Um, same thing over here, calls the top. This one happened to be the mark cycle top, but just major tops, major bottoms, um, is what we're going after. As you can see over here, this one calls the bottom. Uh, of of this market cycle perfectly right over here, um, but as you can see, you know, it, you know, it did call the top as well. But more importantly, the area that we're in again, mark marking off this area right over here. That is essentially where we are right now. And remember, the MVT signal is completely divorced from the other things that we look at when it comes to, you know, the indicators that we're looking at right over here, like price, volume, and time. The, the MVT uh, indicator is essentially the network value divided by the daily transaction value. So it's very interesting to see an like just about the same signature on it um, as we had in what I believe is an extremely similar area in 2014 as we do right now. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, so yeah, uh, what else do we have to look at? Uh, don't want to look at volatility right now, but it's not 
it's not it's not major volatility either on, on a low okay we don't need to we don't need to go over that uh we looked at gbdc let's go look at mr buterol now yeah let's go pick on mr buterol he is i believe mr buterol is really the chart to be watching and a lot a lot easier to read actually as well uh this does look like a head and shoulders reversal pattern to me but of course when you're, we're talking about patterns and playing patterns which again are not my favorite way to do it um you, there is absolutely no reason at all whatsoever to ever play a pattern until you have it fully confirmed. I mean, you could make the argument that you could that you could take a trade off the right shoulder right over here, but it's like, how high does it get before before you put it in? It's just it, it's a lot harder to to, to guess that. Uh, but we do have a very obvious and potentially well defined neckline right over here, which would be right at the 117 area. And if Mr. Buterol does confirm below this area, it has everything else in place: left shoulder, head, right shoulder, falling volume going all the way through. Very obvious and well defined neckline, even on a beautifully well-lined uh, ma major fib we have our our lower level uh, fit or sorry move, exponential moving averages switching around fresh death cross right over here reject 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 confirm 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 below all major moving averages on this time frame as it slowly gets shuffled down if it does indeed break this 117 area and you see volume crawl back up into this range right over here that's going to be an extremely powerful signal that this thing is very 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 likely to hit its measure move as head and shoulders actually do more often than not when it is on the same side as the general trend which the general trend has been down down the general trend has been down for the literally the last over a year going all the way back on over here so when we do have a bearish formation in a bearish market i'm very very happy to play it just like i'm happy to play a bullish bullish formation in a bullish market but make no mistake we are in a very bearish market right now if you don't make high, uh, if you don't make higher highs and higher lows in over a year that's not a good sign <laughs> that's not a good sign at all anyways um you know, uh, higher time frames right over here, 12 hour, you know, you're getting, you're also getting a nasty exponential moving average cross right over here. Everything's bunched up. Everything's getting rejected. Long wicks to the upside, bare wicks and getting uh, shuffled down below all major moving averages. You know, it's looking bad. It looks like it wants to break down. But again, if you want like the, the dictionary definition, the textbook way of playing this, need to see 117 broken first. This would have a measure move pointing all the way down towards, uh oh, look away. If, if you like Mr. Buterol, if you're heavily invested on this and you don't want to, get triggered just look away just pretend them pretend whatever i'm going to say next does not happen measured move is 69 dollars all the way down here and that actually wouldn't even make too much sense to me um because i don't really have anything else in that area but uh I do have something around like $62, I mean $62, $69, same fucking thing basically. At, at the end of the day, man, I mean, I, I know that percentage-wise it's a major percentage difference, but when we're talking about like major market lows and major market highs being put in, I don't care about, I mean, being a few dollars off on, on something like that is not a big deal to me. Uh, again, volume on here, deceivingly high because if we put it on linear scale, you'll very quickly see, uh-oh, what's this? Hey, this looks like a pump and dump. Just, just disregard. Put it on the logarithmic scale. That's right, baby. Not bad now. It looks fine to me. Ah, oh, fuck! Ah, oh, fine. It's like, all right. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, when you have something pumping and dumping like this, it's not fucking good. Uh, okay, so, yeah, Mr. Buterol as well. Major, major red deal on the weekly over here, but not that same sort of uh, bearish engulfing that you see on Mrs. Litecoin and uh, Mr. Bitcoin, um, the king himself. But uh, but below the 10 simple moon average, as long as we're using that as resistance. Direction's down. Um, what about higher time frame oscillators? Uh, Stokes over here trying to get out of the bearish zone. Uh, they are crossed up, to be fair. Um, let's take off the MBT signal, not applicable here. Uh, other indicators not really telling us too much. Just as an aside, I would I would like to see the uh, I would like to see the RSI like give us some sort of divergence on the low. That actually would be a, a pretty pretty good signal. Uh, let's go check out uh, Mrs. Litecoin. How's she doing? Mrs. Litecoin putting in a massive uh, a massive bearish engulfing dildo right over here. In fact, the worst one of the bunch, I would say. Um, I mean, I'm only looking at like like Mrs. Litecoin, Buterol, and then Bitcoin. I don't I don't really look at other things. Again, uh, we'll look at we'll look at Ripple's uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Ripple Nipples, and then also Stellar's. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, again, very, very likely to be uh, followed through on this guy as long as below the, uh, the 10 simple moon average, just bad, not like not good. Charlie Reed told you he knew as long as we're below this potential, uh, this, this resistance right over here, don't like it. Again, remember, this actually did look like an inverted head and shoulders. This was, this actually was one, this actually was one, but again, when Bitcoin isn't one and then you see it, you know, made in the, in the alts, it's, it's a lot easier to paint patterns in the alts because again, they don't have liquidity. 
I can, I can tell you this, try to trade the alts with, you know, with, with anything in the six digits or, or God forbid the seven digits, it can't be done. It can't be fucking done. Like you can't get your fills. Um, so, so, so what does that mean? Well, it means that it's a lot easier to paint, you know, patterns and these sorts of things and get everyone super bullish when it's time to be super bullish. Anyways, uh, rejection right over here. Measure move on this was never achieved. Shoved right back down the proverbial neckline. And now we are using it as resistance. One, two, three, four tests. Reject, 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 reject. And likely to carry on downwards. Again, as long as we're respecting this area, $32.5 as resistance. I am quite bearish on this guy as well. Probably coming, you know, it's going to depend on whatever Bitcoin does, but probably coming back down to like this 25 and a quarter area. Um, over time, again, I'm not saying this happening tomorrow or today or, or even next week. It's probably going to take some time. Uh, but yeah, the the settings are in there. It does not look good. Um, let's go over and check out Mr. Ripples, Mrs. Ripples. Uh, Mrs. Ripples actually looks a lot like um, Mrs. Nipples, I should say. Looks a lot like an inverted cup and handle, uh, not like a picture perfect one or anything like that. Perhaps it's better to see on a uh, on on an inverted chart. Let's go check it out. The inverse Hagen rechart. Yeah, it, yeah, it kind of it, it certainly does actually. Or I mean, whatever it does look like, it looks like a it looks like a very bullish consol consolidation pattern on this chart. Uh, but zooming into this guy right over here, does this look like a cup and handle? Does it look like a does it look like some sort of a triangle? It does. Um, and as long as we're essentially as long as we're essentially below what is this? Hey, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right at all. Hold on. This is, <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Something something doesn't look right here. I need to look at the regular chart. All right. Yeah. Here we go. As yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I was just looking at right over there. But as as long as Mrs. Nipples is below thirty three and a third cent, uh, not bad. I mean, sorry, not good. Not not good at all. Again, below all major moving averages, you are getting the divergence between these moving averages right over here, which is probably not what you want to see if you want to be long this thing. And uh, is there a measure move to be made on this? You know as a potential inverted cup and handle. It does have the right volume characteristics. If we even do a very conservative one, well, that actually be pointing you below your current low right over here, which would be very nasty. Again, I think that all of the fun is being had or all the, I mean, I think it's just easier to chart to look at on the three day over here. As you know, again, as long as you're below this area, 34 and a half cent, very bad. As long as you're below the 21 exponential moving average, overall bad, uh, three day double death cross. Next support 28, 28 and a quarter cent. If that area fails, which I'm not saying it's going to, I think it's going to take a, it's going to take something to chew. Th it's it's going to take a lot to chew through this area. Uh, but hey, if it does fail, then mid to high teens. Uh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. So if we see an inverted cup and handle and something like that, do we see this? Or let's go actually through Stellar's first. Uh, Stellar over here, ten and a half cents again. Uh, fresh three day dollar death cross. As long as you're below, t uh, as long as you're below 11 cents, very. I just don't see what people are seeing on this thing, man. People are like talking about this thing going to the fucking moon. Like it does have a better chart than most, but this is a bull trap. This is a failure of pattern. Uh, retested, rejected. Very nasty exponential moving average cross below all major moving averages. Bad. That looks bullish. It's like what the fuck, man. Um, again, probably gonna take some time, but uh, if and when Bitcoin does break down, again, making an assumption here, very likely to see you know single like mid to high single digits. Uh, spies over here, uh, traditional markets. Uh, I think we finally hit the. I've, have we finally hit the area that I've been looking for? To about two sixty two. I mean, close enough is close enough. Probably probably putting in a little bit of a high right here, but uh, I think it's gonna take some time to like play out again um, I, There's no rush to get into a short trade on this in my opinion I would not be surprised if this thing, you know pops back down uh, Tags like 257 and then and then and then grinds this area once again It's really got to make people sweat now You are getting the indications that that the that the lows are certainly not in we had or sorry not we but on CNBC I believe um, one of the higher ups that I think it was JP Morgan Maybe maybe not JP Morgan, but a big bank um, basically said that we believe the lows are in which is you know it's not because they're dumb it's not because they're dumb that they're saying that it's because they need people to sell to um they need people to essentially provide liquidity for them so how do they do that well they they tell the public hey the lows are in just keep on buying baby when uh you know a lot of things lining up for this area this 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 area ish being the top um of this bounce so Overall, we do have, I believe, the measure move off. Yeah, so it has it hit the measure move on this. Uh, I guess you can kind of consider that. It's not like it's not like one to one. It doesn't need to be. Uh, but this ascending triangle right over here, you know, technically speaking, was about two sixty two 
and a half. Didn't quite get there. Got a little bit, a few cents below 262 itself. Um, but that is also the neckline of this, uh, of, of the head and shoulders reversal pattern on this guy, which looks eerily similar to Mr. Buterol right now. This guy right over here. Um, uh, higher level time frames. You got the 12 hour 55 exponential providing resistance. It looks like that's a that's a little bit of a reversal dildo to me. Uh, same with same with the daily. The 55 is literally in the same area. Um, still, res as long as you're below there, still respecting the the daily dildo death cross. Uh, two day right over here. Um, actually, not that bad. Uh, weekly over here again, running into all the resistances. Um, at, at the current moment in time, bad exponential moving average cross right over here. Lower time frames probably gonna ha probably gonna be printing. Are they, well, no, actually, I don't know. Are they printing divergences yet? No, they're not. So that's really what I'd be looking for. I'd, I'd want to see some sort of like, uh, some, some of the momentum oscillators printing divergence to, um, to the downside. Uh, you know, you're going to have your stokes all the way up here, but it just doesn't mean too much in, until I get, you know, a reading like that. Um, you do have that very orderly drop off in volume going all the way over here. You know, it's, 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 it's likely on its way, but again, just like Bitcoin, I don't think it happens anytime soon. I don't even think it's, it's appropriate to really be bearish on this until like a bearish looking for new lows until you break the 200 exponential right over here at 239. I think I very strongly believe that it does happen. You do actually find this thing, you know, at like the two, 210 to 220 ish range sometime, but it's going to take, this one's probably going to take a lot longer than Bitcoin, I'd imagine. Um, so, yeah, speaking of Bitcoin, let's go back on over here and wrap this bitch up. Sorry, let's look at the longs and shorts. Uh, both not really paying any sort of an interest rate. I mean, longs are technically paying more by by a lot but it's it's that's that's nothing right there it's, it's not anything to be concerned with uh 31 and a half thousand longs open longs is something to be concerned with though 21.7 thousand open shorts with 4,000 of those really being hedged, so we have about 17.8 thousand shorts open. Uh, that is something to be concerned with. Why? Because, again, going on over here to our longs and shorts charts, we can actually understand that that these areas, when longs get to this, like, above 30,000 uh, 30, area, or sorry, 33,000 area right over here, which again, you can't make formations on these things. There's no such, there's no, there's no fucking rising wedge or anything like that on these. There's no bearish divergence that you can do on these things. They're like incomplete pieces of the puzzle to begin with. They're like, they're like secondary or tertiary tools to even look at to begin with. But anytime that Bitcoin does get above this area right here on the long side, typically does match up with major dumps. And then more importantly on the short side, anytime that Bitcoin gets around like the low 20,000s for shorts, these are like major dumps. This was the August, uh, early August dump. This was your break of 6,000. This was your January dump, February dump, and you can see that we are back down uh, around this area again. Not necessarily all the way there, um, but uh, but fair enough. You know, something something that's certainly on the radar. Uh, so what is, it's essentially saying that the bears have plenty to, plenty of ammo to go and dry if they so desire. Anyways, going back on over here to the lower time frames, uh, very very low time frames. If Bitcoin can actually break this, let's uh, again, and nothing's changed from last night. If Bitcoin can actually break 35, 69, 66 ish area on good volume and actually close like at least an hourly total below there, then then we actually will have a confirmation of break. Yes, there will be bounces likely to the downside, but again, still still just really putting in the next move of this uh of this major symmetrical triangle over here again still pointing down towards the you know 3300 ish level um by the same token if bitcoin does break out to the upside well this 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 symmetrical triangle right here that we're working on actually does have a measure move let's see if it matches up with one of those areas that i'm looking for uh-oh 3800 nicely done so yeah 3800 would be it would would be would be uh <laughs> would be really really nice man it would be really fucking nice if we could actually get it up there but hey you you know doesn't always happen the way that you want. In fact, it doesn't need to happen the way that you want in order to make money. But uh, again, if it does break to the downside, technically speaking, there would be a measure move on this on this baby as well. That would be pointing all the way down around here. Oh, you got to love that. Matches up with this nice horizontal at 3,400. So again, um, you know, break up to the upside would be confirmed above 3,620. Uh, you would still have resistance right around here. Former, you know, high of this consolidation at 3,670, 3,680. But above there, then then I, I, I do see kind of clear, clear skies to the 3,750, 3,800 area, which is where I become a lot more interested in a bigger trade although hey if we do break it to the downside right over here well same shit so that's going to do it for me today i hope this one finds you well hope um everyone's having a uh, it's thursday yeah hey have a have a great thursday hope have a happy thursday i'll be back on later with some live stream action so looking forward to see you there if not well wishing you well anyways take care and see you guys soon